Hey, it's Sam, talking about the full moon in Sagittarius on early Sunday morning. Um, it'll be completely full in Sagittarius. Um, hopefully you've been watching the moon in the sky um, lately, the last week or so. Um, especially it passed in front of Jupiter and then went through, um, you know, passed through uh, Jupiter in, in Leo. Then it went over um, Mars. Now it's you know, in uh, Scorpio near Mars and Saturn. You see it's in between Mars and Saturn. Beautiful light show in the sky. And so, the, you know, the moon's going to actually be full at its, at its deepest f fullness in Mula Nakshatra, which is in Sagittarius. And that'll be early Sunday morning um, on the West Coast. If you're in, like, Europe, it'll be the middle of the day on Sunday. This is also a day, about a day or so before the solstice um, and this is the day you know the solstice is the day when the sun changes direction and the days start getting shorter of course the solstice is the longest day and then as soon as it becomes the solstice moment then the day starts getting shorter so the coordination or the conjunction of these two events which have nothing to do with each other full moons and and solstices is pretty um, interesting. So again this full moon is going to be in Mula Nakshatra in Sagittarius and this is a time with the full moon where we are trying to balance and harmonize the energy from the Sun because the Sun is in Gemini so the Gemini themes of intelligence, intellect, curiosity, trying to understand things through the, you know, through the um, intellect and gathering details and speaking about them and trying to comprehend why things happen. That quality of life, which is where the sun is, is being contrasted with the full moon in Sagittarius you know, bringing a sort of heart more aligned with belief and hope and meaning. So we connect all of those details of the world that are so interesting in Gemini with the otherworldly teachings of Sagittarius. So there needs to be a, there needs to be a sort of marriage, a sort of harmony of these things. And that's what the full moon really brings, at least in a kind of very neutral way. You know, the full moons are really times where we can look at a certain polarity in life. And we, we deal with polarities a lot in sort of amateur and professional psychological and metaphysical lingo now we all I see so much talking about the shadow the shadow the shadow and it's talked about so much you know but not really understood very well it's just sort of you know something to kind of play with but we really what's more important I think even than the shadow let's say on a personal level is is where both ends of a polarity are illuminated rather than light and shadow because what shadow implies is that there's something very bright and then something very dark where one end of a certain you know issue is hidden so when we have a full moon we can illuminate both ends of the polarity so both ends of the Gemini Sagittarius polarity rather than let's say if it's a new moon or full or a like a new moon in Gemini or new moon in Sagittarius one end of the polarity is hidden and it's kind of it's you know it's uh, the moon that's hidden at that time and we lose ourselves in the action but when we have the full moon there's a balance between the action now like the action of Gemini and the seeking of answers and of you know comprehension and details of Gemini and the opposite side of that, which is connecting those details with 
the bigger picture, things that are not of this earth. So we have both of them now. Now, of course, individually, we, under, we can realize this most, pers you know, on a, on a most personal level, based on what signs, I'm sorry, what houses those signs fall in. So wherever Sagittarius is in your natal chart, whatever house that is, you'll see a lot of action there um, in a more specific way. But everybody will be in this place of trying to connect their words and their, and their ideas with something beyond just people and social circumstances and you know the typical things of the world now so it is a great time to really feel your gurus teachings feel the teachings that you follow the most and really bring them into the heart full moon in Sagittarius often when we have the full moon in Sagittarius or I should say usually that's the full moon that's called Guru Purnima this year it's not the Guru Purnima is next month when the full moon is in Capricorn but it's often that time when we really drink in the teachings of the Guru. So look out for important teachings and pay attention to your own intuition and, and the wisdom that you've already accumulated through life experience relative to the information that you gather or the words you say. And notice the connection between how much you truly comprehend and understand what you believe in. And again, this is a big part of the Gemini Sagittarius polarity. So rather than one being dark and in the shadow, one or the other, now's the time to illuminate that whole polarity. Meaning that you connect the details with the bigger picture and you take your beliefs, which are the bigger picture, and really try to understand them intellectually. Because if you don't understand the things you believe in, then they're not going to be of use or val and value to you when life circumstances interject. This is why you see people who wind up believing in things, but then when they need to really put their beliefs into practice, they wind up being like a hypocrite. Because they don't really understand their beliefs, they're just these amorphous things that aren't really connected. They don't understand how their beliefs work. And this is why astrology is so important and this is what Indian metaphysics, metaphysical sciences are about. They're not, they're not religions. They're not beliefs. They are practices. Astrology is a great one because it's, it takes those universal forces and shows the specifics of the energy behind them. So we can actually understand the evolving process of our consciousness, not just believe that it's all going to get better one day. We can see what's happening like right now, like if, if it's a planetary cycle or transit or whatever, and really connect it with the evolutionary principle behind it. And of course, that's something that's very intellectual. That's the very Gemini part, is the, is the comprehension of how it works. Because underneath it all, we all want to know how everything works. It's the first thing a child does is, what's this? Who am I? How does this work? Why? 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 That's very Gemini. Mercury, Gemini energy. That's where the sun is right now. So that's a big sphere of action right now as we're questioning and wondering why and wanting things to make sense. But we can then just get bogged down too much in the you know, hyper-literalist point of view for instance, people who don't believe in astrology and they think astro and they, they think astrology is some belief system, they're like, oh, astrology is not scientific and, you know, I don't believe in it. Well, no one who practices, no one who really gets astrology believes in it. They see it work because they practice it and that's, that's where the belief comes from. So authentic belief, and I'm saying authentic belief, is not separate from practice. It's not blind faith. So blind faith is the Sagittarius end of the spectrum. 
So you have blind faith when the Gemini end of the spectrum is, when the Gemini end, the polarity is in the shadow. And you have like atheism and this hyper-scientific literalist point of view when the Sagittarius end of the duality is in the shadow. This is what I meant about the shadow sometimes. So the shadow side of Gemini is intellect disconnected from belief, disconnected from a higher purpose, and the, and the shadow end of Sagittarius is when belief is disconnected from method and scrutiny. So both ends are illuminated. When we have full moons, we can really see both ends of the polarity illuminated rather than one cast in a deep shadow. So we're seeing a lot of the shadow now especially Jupiterian stuff is very much in the shadows particularly because Jupiter has joined Rahu the planet of the shadow so this is why we're seeing so many shadow sides of government politicians philosophies and beliefs on a political scale I've been saying this for months because we have Jupiter and Rahu the North Node so close to each other and they're starting to close in again much more you know um, you know much more because Jupiter is now moving forward and it's very close to Rahu in the sky very close to the North Node so we're seeing a lot more reality and scrutiny come even on the political end of things there's been a lot of polarizing around at least in the US around our around our presidential election and Republicans and Democrats and a figure like Donald Trump rising without much scrutiny for quite a while and now a lot more scrutiny being placed on him and Bernie Sanders is also very much you know both of them were very elevated figures as far as you know believing in their rhetoric almost a kind of savior you know both of them Trump a savior for one side and Sanders a savior for the other side more sobering realities coming now that for instance it appears that Hillary Clinton is going, she is the presumptive nominee for the Democrats and Trump is now the, pre, the presumptive nominee for the Republicans and you're seeing how the shadows have been really churning around both of these people with high negatives but also um, more scrutiny coming to bear now. Um, so that's an example of the shadow. You can see the difference between that kind of shadow, the shadow side of Jupiter, and something where both ends of the spectrum are illuminated. So I'm talking about this as well because Jupiter is the ruler of Sagittarius. So with this full moon in Sagittarius, we also have to look at the ruler to see what our beliefs and gurus and teachings are about right now. Notice how much you're really involved in worldly philosophies now and very much about governments and really concerned about what's going to happen with government and the power structure centralized power which has to do with Leo so we might see some you know some some big shift over the next few days um, relative to these political structures um, some sort of big announcement or um, you know major shift big change if not literally um, notice in yourself where you're starting to get real around certain implications of the political season or what have you but even beyond that um, you might even notice where an otherwise sort of mystical mind that you might have is very worldly and political right now and really putting a lot of attention and stress and fear and worry in those areas and again a lot of this is because Jupiter and Rahu are very close together in Leo right now so there's a lot of stress and worry about the the political implications of a lot of things now in the world as shown by this full moon now it's also in Mula Nakshatra Mula is it literally means root and it's actually when we're looking at you know when you're looking at the moon when you're looking at the full moon on that full moon day 
you'll be looking right back into the galactic center as well. Mulla is actually the galactic core. It's where the, you know, that core of stars exists at the center of our galaxy. You know, when you see a picture of our galaxy, it's this globular cluster at the center, and then spiral galaxy, you know, the spiral arms fan out from the center. So Mulla is when you're looking right back into the center of the galaxy. When you look up at the sun, you're looking directly away from the center of the galaxy now. So, again, this has to do with the solstice as well. Now, and this very important because there's a deep there's a deep connection to the solstices and the plane of the galaxy now which is the same timing and the same implications that relates to the Mayan calendar that reset at the end of 2012 of course that was on the winter solstice December 21st 2012 Notice this is six months later, not six months after December 2012, but six months after the winter solstice is the summer solstice. You didn't really hear a lot about the summer solstice implications, but what it means is that the sun is passing through the plane of the galaxy on the solstices. This is what reset at the end of the mind calendar. So every time we have the summer solstice as well, the sun is now on the opposite end of the solstice. So what I'm what I'm bringing up here is that this plane of the galaxy is a deep, deeply transformative section of the sky, the most transformative section of the sky. People should investigate the Mayan astronomy and Mayan cosmology. Their whole system of astronomy and cosmology is based on the galactic plane, the plane of the galaxy. It's totally sidereal based as all ancient all ancient cosmologies are more sidereal based and I say cosmology because it's more about yugas and eons of time not zodiac astrology which is you know which might be based on a tropical zodiac cosmology is based on the sidereal zodiac of our relationship in the galaxy so in Mayan cosmology everything happens along the plane of the galaxy what they call the dark rift and that dark rift, we're having this new moon right in the dark rift. It's like six degrees of Sagittarius. That's where the solstice points happen now. Like at zero Ardra and 640 Mula. It's not 640, it's actually about, the full moon is happening at about 520. So it's about, a, it's about a degree before, like I said, it's about a day before. So we're having the full moon like the, di uh, you know, about a day or so before the solstice. And um, that is this coordination of these two transformative situations. Full moon, again, illuminating the Gemini Sagittarius polarity with an emphasis on using your mind to explore your beliefs and really integrating your beliefs into the heart and yet enormous transformation around those things so you might be really feeling this kind of shake up in your whole belief system right now and even if it's not about it doesn't always have to be about religion and stuff we don't those things change much slower often they might change very quickly as well especially if you're very susceptible and ready for you know meeting a guru or something you know my guru Amachi is traveling in the United States now like she does every summer so you know if you're in a place where you've been looking for an inspiring figure and guru and teacher look and see if she's coming in your area because this is going to be an important cycle for the next 30 days and it could be very very transformative and not just personally transformative you know we're talking a lot about Scorpio which is a lot of personal emotional transformation talking about in a bigger sense the Scor the Scorpio is the end of a section of the zodiac that's much more about our personal stuff personal emotional stuff Sagittarius is the beginning of the transcendent part of the zodiac so when we transform in Scorpio the transformation of Mula 
is the real spiritual, mystical, metaphysical transformation. Not just the personal, oh, I really worked through some emotional stuff. We're so into all of that. That's, of course, it's important, but sometimes we need to just uproot all of that and just, just kill it. That's what mullah is. It literally means root, and it's uprooting. So even uprooting all of that emotional stuff that you so identify with yourself. Oh, yeah, I was, I'm transforming so much, and, you know, I'm working through this stuff from my childhood and on. I mean, we all do that, but some, at some point we get so hooked into all of that and we act like we've done some big transformation when we really haven't. We're just kind of like little moments come and we have an insight and then we go right back into the same old, yeah, this is me and I'm work, I'm alive and I'm this person and I'm this, that. And you see people, they hardly don't change at all. And then all of a sudden things change that just completely blow your mind. That's what this is about. And by the way, the other important correlation to this plane of the galaxy and mullah and ardra is the kundalini. That's what the kundalini is. The cosmology of this section of the zodiac. It's the root, the root chakra and the crown chakra. Because mullah literally means root. And it's the root. And the top, the opposite of the middle of mullah, is zero ardra between Mrigashira and Ardra Nakshatra, that's where the sun is, and that's the right and the left petals on the in the third eye, and it's where Soma and Shiva, Mrigashira, which is ruled by Soma, and Ardra, which is ruled by Shiva, this is where Soma and Rudra mix in our mind. And you have Shiva and Shakti mingling here. That's where the sun is. So the sun is up there in the Shiva Shakti section and the moon is down in the Mula section in the root. So this is the section of the zodiac when you look at the zodiac as a as the Kala Purusha of, on a cosmological level. You as a cosmic being not just a human being. There's all of that energetic potency there. And again this when you when I did a lot of explorations into Mayan cosmology, the and the reason it's so compelling, especially and and it also informs my usage of the sidereal zodiac is because you see this sidereal, you you see these the same section of the sky, which is not based on the seasons of Earth, but these sections of the sky, the exact same energy mirrored and reflected in all ancient cultures. The ancient Mayans said the same thing about this section of the sky. They didn't use the exact same metaphors because it was a different culture, but it was the same energy. The dark rift was also the place of spiritual transformation and annihilation. They had different symbols for it. Instead of Sagittarius being an archer and a bow, it's called the tree of life because it rises up on the horizon. That opposite part where and by the way, they, you know, the Indians call mula, or they call that section of the sky mula, which means root, root, and the Mayans call it the tree of life. Root, tree, hello, it's the same thing. It's the same section of the sky where in the Indian stories, they, they're churning the milk ocean. They have that pivot that goes down and is anchored at the bottom, and then they churn the milk ocean, and the soma comes out at the top. Same stories in Mayan culture. And it's the same stories of this section of the zodiac. Mula and Ardra, nakshatras, are very transformative, transformational, and what we would call destructive. But again, everything, every act of creation starts with an act of destruction. And in the Mula end of the, of the axis, it's uprooting, it's destroying something. It's just a matter of what you're destroying. So if you're destroying the truth, then you're, then you're screwed. If you're destroying your attachment to ignorance and entrenched, you know, darkness and fears and paranoia, because we all have it as potential in Scorpio, we all have that potential to just be stuck with something that we're terrified of, just being stuck with our terrified, 
you know, of our, you know, of being terrified of death is enough. We all have it. The next thing is the redemption of Sagittarius, but that redemption starts with uprooting all of that previous stuff. So that the depth of Scorpio can actually turn into enormous devotion and trust. So these are very big themes right now. Um, and the nakshatra scheme, this section of the sky is very important, not just, you can just read it like, well, it's Mula Nakshatra, which is blah, 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 blah. This is, it's not just another nakshatra, this is not just another section of the sky. It's the cosmological axis of Vedic thought, of the Vedas itself. Vedic cosmology revolves around this section of the sky. So many of the stories, the story of creation, like I said, that comes from like the churning of the milk ocean. I mean, where do you think milk ocean comes from? Milk ocean is a, is a word for Milky Way. They call it Sundara, which is an ocean, the ocean of milk. It's in the Vedas. Churning the milk ocean. Churning. This is the axis where we're churning the milk ocean. So that whole story is a symbol of this section of the sky. And once you understand the cosmology behind it, you understand that's what they were talking about. And again, this is another reason also to actually study astrology more than just your chart, and all this stuff. It's so feeble. It works on that level, but where it's really amazing and fascinating is learning that this is the origin of life. And that's what they were talking about. The, the early, earliest Vedic astrological references are really much, are very much cosmological references. It's about cosmology. That's what I mean by cosmology. The cosmos, the cosmic connection that we have. So, very important. Um, full moon, summer solstice, transformative time right now. And we've been going through quite a bit of that with Saturn and um, Mars and Scorpio. And the other thing is that um, Mars has gone retrograde back into Libra as well um, by the time of this he, Mars actually went retrograde back into Libra, um, uh, what's the exact date here, it was like, on, like the day or two before, the 18th or 19th, so, that shift also, from Saturn being in Scorpio, it's gone back into Libra, so you might be seeing some personal things in relationships and interactions with others because Saturn, I'm sorry, because Mars has gone retrograde back into Libra, poked his head back in there, trying to strengthen some of your relationship, um, you know, situations and your sense of compromise with others and things like that. So you need to be careful and just notice that's also going on. Venus is also in Gemini. So Venus is in Ardra again. So there's quite a bit, you might have feel some real recent intensity in your relationships because of that Mars going back into Libra, Venus now, not just in Gemini, but in Ardra, Nakshatra, um, which is that sort of destructive, implosive force. So 